Yoshi's Island, or I should say Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, because this is the sequel to Super Mario World. And I think a lot of people, when this came out, didn't like that. They didn't like the whole babysitting, baby Mario crying. <laughs> and a lot of people passed this game up. I would say including myself, but I'm not really so sure. I don't really remember this game when it launched. Um, this game launched in 1995, late 1995. And by then, you know, the PlayStation was out. I didn't have a subscription to Nintendo Power anymore, but yet it was still too early to have internet. So it was like a weird time where I didn't have Nintendo Power anymore. I had a subscription to Nintendo Power probably for three or four years, kind of maybe you know, 1991 to 1994, maybe. But this would have been after I had Nintendo Power, before I had the internet. And, you know, I just didn't see, you know, reviews for this game. I didn't know anyone at the time when this game came out that got this game. And so, for me, I don't know if it's, you know, I didn't like the premise or, you know, just kind of went under the radar as a lot of things maybe from Nintendo at, at this late 95 maybe did uh, I don't know it's possible I wouldn't have liked it anyways look I get it a lot of people saw this game didn't like the gameplay uh, and without really giving it uh, you know a fair chance just kind of shrugged it off and maybe we're you know, disappointed that this was a Super Mario World game. But this is a Super Mario World game, developed by Nintendo EAD. A lot of the same developers that worked on previous Mario games. The designer of Yoshi himself and Shigeru Miyamoto said something along the lines like he always wanted to make a Mario game where Yoshi was the star and that he was never really happy with um, Yoshi Safari and uh, you know Yoshi's Cookie and the other games that have come out starring Yoshi. Um, this game came out on the Super Nintendo first. I'm playing it on the GBA mainly. Uh, I just recently picked it up on the GBA, but I wanted to show you guys, so I figured I'll use the Super Nintendo version to show you because I can't exactly record my Game Boy Advance gameplay. <laughs> Um, so I figured we'd talk about the Super Nintendo version, but I'm mainly playing this on the GBA. On the Super Nintendo, a lot of people may not realize that this game uses the Super FX2 chip. So a lot of people remember the FX chip that was in Star Fox, Stunt Race FX. And of course, people are going to think this chip is primarily for, you know, rendering games in 3D on the Super Nintendo. And, you know, that's true. Most Super FX games, including Super FX 2, notably used in Doom, to get Doom running on the Super Nintendo, obviously were used to, you know, render 3D. But in the case of Yoshi's Island, it could be used for other things, mainly scaling and rotating large sprites. Uh, the Super Nintendo obviously has Mode 7. The issue with Mode 7 is it can only scale and rotate the background layer. In Super Mario World, when you fight Bowser, the end boss, You'll notice, Bowser himself scales and rotates all over the place, but there's no background. The background's just a solid color, just a solid black background. And that's because that is the background layer. Bowser is the background layer. The Super Nintendo can't scale and rotate sprites. It can only do that to the background layer. So the Super FX2 chip here just helps with all these sprites on the screen that are scaling and rotating. It's a gorgeous game. Uh, it's got a kind of watercolor, kind of painted look. Everything has brush strokes to it. But there's lots of color. There's lots of parallax scrolling. Beautiful backgrounds. It's a gorgeous game. It's got nice music, catchy music. And the level design is excellent. The level design is 
classic Super Mario in a lot of ways. There's a lot of sort of puzzles kind of baked into the level design. The levels are longer than probably any previous Super Mario game uh, ever uh, to this point. So there may be less levels. There's only, I think, six worlds in this game. There's less worlds and therefore really less levels, I think, than many previous Super Mario games, but the levels are a lot longer. I would say some of these levels are twice as long compared to any level in like Super Mario World. So excellent level design, lots of neat puzzles built into the levels. Some of the levels have secret exits or keys that you need to find. Uh, the levels also have bonuses at the end. Um, during the level, there's going to be these flower things hidden all over the place that you can find. And the more of those that you find, the higher the chance that you're going to get a bonus round at the end of the level. And you can, you know, rank up extra lives in these bonus rounds. Yoshi may not have as many power-ups as Mario does in Mario 3 or Super Mario World. But he does have some. You can, for example, swallow a watermelon, and then you shoot out the seeds like a machine gun, which is pretty cool. Yoshi can also find these um, power-ups where he'll temporarily turn into like a helicopter or a tank. Uh, one of them will like bulldoze through the ground, or the helicopter obviously will fly through the air. And you've got to get to like the next part of the level within a certain time limit, or you'll turn back into Yoshi. So yeah, the level design's great. The gameplay is a little bit different. So Yoshi's main attack is throwing eggs. You collect eggs um, mainly by swallowing enemies. So when you, you, of course, you're Yoshi, you eat an enemy, then you press down to swallow the enemy and help poop out an egg. I think you can have up to like six eggs. These eggs will just follow you. And that's kind of your main attack. Um, you can throw these eggs. But the throwing mechanic is a little different. And again, people maybe didn't like it at first. If they didn't give it time. You have to hold the throw button. As you're holding your throw button on the Game Boy Advance, that happens, that's the R trigger. So for me playing on the Game Boy Advance, hold the R trigger. As you're holding it, a cursor will appear on the screen. And this cursor will sweep on a trajectory. It goes from like maybe two degrees, almost straight up. And then it sweeps down to, oh, I don't know, 100 degrees just below you, and uh, and then it sweeps back up, and it's constantly sweeping up and down, and you let go of the fire button, let go of the right trigger, in the case of the GBA, when you want to fire, and the egg will fire off in the direction the cursor was aimed at. So it's a little different. You can't exactly spam the uh, throw button to throw the eggs, although you kind of can, but they're Again, they're just gonna instantly kind of fire downwards unless you give that cursor time to get to where you want it to go to. So again, that's a little different. I can see maybe people didn't like it right away, but once you get used to it, it's kind of neat. Now you can still jump on enemies. You can still butt stomp enemies. It's still a Mario game in that regard, but your main attack is a little bit different. And then of course, there's the elephant in the room. And that is the fact you're protecting Baby Mario. When Yoshi gets hit, Baby Mario will go flying off, and he'll start crying. And uh, I think people found the crying noise maybe a little annoying. I think on the Game Boy Advance, it's a little bit less prevalent. It's not as loud, maybe, as when you're playing it on the Super Nintendo version. Um, but, you know, either way, Mario will float away, and you have a time limit. By default, it's 10 seconds, but you can collect these little, I don't know what they are, little bugs. <laughs> that makes no sense, but that increases the time limit that you have. Um, and basically, so when you lose Baby Mario, he starts crying, he's floating away, this time limit's counting down, and you've got to get back to him. You've got to get him in time. If you don't get him in time, uh, the enemies will take him away, and that's a uh, lost life. So that's one way that you'll lose lives, but most of the time you're going to lose lives because you fell in lava or you fell down a pit, and obviously that's an instant uh, death. The thing with the baby Mario, you know, crying and, you know, that whole part being annoying, 
it's not a huge deal because if you don't get hit, that won't happen. If you're good enough at playing the game, you're rarely going to get hit. And so, you're rarely going to have this situation. Again, you're mostly going to die from falling in lava or falling in a pit. Uh, and sometimes just learning the level, right? Uh, so, I don't know. It's kind of annoying, but it's not really a huge deal. It's not. I didn't find it as annoying as some people maybe claim. I didn't find it as annoying as some people claim, I guess. Uh, overall, I think this is a great game. Yes, it's a little different, but is it a Super Mario World game? Yeah, for the most part. I love the level design. A lot of it's just fun. And you got good platforming, good level design, nice bright colorful graphics, excellent music. For the most part, I really like this game. Um, and it's got some challenge to it. It certainly ramps up in difficulty um, across 48 levels. Um, you're going to find some challenge here. So it might look like a kid's game, but I would say it's not. If you like any, most Super Mario games, you know, they have sort of a medium challenge. They're not super easy. They're not super difficult. Most people uh, can get through them with some effort. And uh, I, I think that falls perfectly in line here. Um, the game is a medium challenge. Despite the fact it's bright and colorful and it might look like a kid's game, it's not necessarily a kid's game. Give this one a try if you've never tried it. It is worth checking out. Um, play it on the Super Nintendo. Play it on the GBA. You can now play it on the Switch, which is the GBA version, which I found a little strange. I'm like, why didn't they just do the Super Nintendo version? Obviously, the biggest issue with the Switch version is it's going to be cropped. Switch. Sorry, the, the GBA version. Um, GBA is a lower resolution than the Super Nintendo, and anytime they port a Super Nintendo game to the GBA, you are cropped in a little bit. You can look up and down, and that helps a little bit, but you're still cropped, and I, again, I find it strange. As far as the Switch version goes, they didn't just give you the Super Nintendo version instead, but nonetheless, you can play it on Switch, you can play it on GBA, play it on Super Nintendo. Um, either way, give it a chance. It is a fun game.